Hello ladies and gents, welcome to CG Reaction and this is Casually Explained, the English language by the channel Casually Explained. Howdy my dudes, in this video I pretend to be American. Alright, so what is it, British? I didn't know that. That's a, maybe one of the who knows. So yeah, this is about the English language. I guess he's gonna talk about the origin of how it started or I don't know what he's gonna talk about. But Casually Explained is a great channel, I reacted to one or two videos from him already. So yeah, it's a great channel. Alright people, if you if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, check out other reactions I did, there's a link in the description with all of my videos, check out the cast, all the playlists like Internet Historian, you know, uh, SCP, Salmonella, let me know, things like that. And yeah, let's watch this one. While most people in the world are forced to learn English if they ever want to leave their country for an international career, English speakers routinely visit other countries for leisure, not learn the language, and then get mad when no one understands them. English is such an influential language, in fact, that most people from English-speaking countries never even consider learning a second language to fluent. When you think about it, that feels like arrogant and stupid. I mean, uh, you know, everybody, you know, everybody goes to some other country, you know, learns English and then go there. But English-speaking people comes to foreign countries, you know, they expect people to speak the uh, the English language rather than speaking, uh, you know, them themselves learning the local language. But in the end, it's not really, is it? Because let's be honest, in English language is the international language. If you want to do, you know, international training or anything, you need to learn English. So, I mean, you can't expect English-speaking people to learn your local language when English is the international language. They, they, they are rightfully expecting you to speak English. So, I mean, it's not really arrogant when you think about it. I mean, it is the international language. English people basically dominated everything. Let's uh, let's think about it properly. I mean, look, the calendar is basically, you know, uh, English calendar, let's just say. I mean, obviously Julius Caesar came up with it, but then it was more honed and perfected by Catholics, yeah, by, by, you know, uh, I think Catholic scientists from the Vatican City, something like that. So it is the, it is the calendar that we all use. Everywhere in the world, if you want to speak anything, it is the English language. So it's not a you know, far-fetched thing. It makes sense that English-speaking people don't learn more languages than just English. Because it is the dominating language, let's be honest. Fluency. If we look at a map of Europe, we can see that the average person in Sweden or Norway knows 2.5 languages, Germany 2, the UK is trailing with 1.6, and America is still figuring out what a kilometer is. <laughs> Point eight. So he's not. They don't even speak English. That was he saying. <laughs> I mean, this makes sense. Every English-speaking country would have something like this. I mean, the primary uh, language English, and everything else. I mean, who cares? While every other country, obviously, they will speak their native languages and English. So basically, two languages and maybe more. Two point five. So they speak. Uh, uh, most of them speak two languages, but more than them speak is over th three languages. So that's surprising. In India, obviously, people speak two languages, even if they don't know English. I mean, they would speak their local uh, language, and they'll speak the you know national language, which is Hindi. I mean, most of the people. So, two languages are must. And then, you know, pe lots of people are now learning English too. You know, it's catching on. So, 2.5 at least. I think that would be the India's number two. Who knows? But yeah. One redeeming factoid that I've heard quite frequently from English-speaking people is that English is one of the hardest languages to learn, which isn't true. And while I know that they just want to feel good about themselves, they should know by now that no one is allowed to feel good about themselves. English is the hardest language? Uh, I don't think it's the hardest language just because how mainstream it is. Uh, whenever you turn on TV, most of the th most of the channels will be speaking English. Most of the music people uh, listen to. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, international things like you know Hollywood and things like that. They are they are also English speaking. So I mean, just because there's so much culture behind English, you hear English eventually in your life constantly. I mean, I learned English mostly because of the you know watching movies and you know Hollywood movies and then you know hearing all these songs and things. Obviously, I honed it later on by learning things properly, but, you know, base, base of it was just, you know, all the media. So, in that sense, it's not hard. I mean, and I think the hardest language is Mandarin, if I'm not mistaken currently. I mean, there is so much that goes into it. There are lots of African languages which has to have some kind of a, you know, some tongue tone or something just for the language. I mean, some, some languages are there that you have to make noises just to be proper or something like that. So I don't think English is the hardest because it's so mainstream, I guess. I was on my watch. 
especially myself. In reality, how hard a language is to learn is actually only really related to how similar it is to the language you already know. So for an English speaker, it usually takes about 600 hours of dedicated study and practice to reach conversational fluency in any of the Romance or Scandinavian languages, then around twice as long for Greek, Hebrew, or Slavic languages, then around twice as long as that again for Arabic, Japanese, Korean, Assembly, or Mandarin. So if you're learning English and speak any of those languages, then pretty much the reverse applies. What is true though is that English has quite a few quirks that make it easier to learn than other languages in some ways, and quirks that make it way harder as well. One of the best features of English is that we don't have masculine, feminine, or neutral. We just have the definite article, the. The table, the refrigerator, and there are no regular nouns with gender, making English the ultimate safe space language. The downside, however, is that while I was trying to learn French, I would say, Gem la chocolat. And people would say, le chocolat, le, the North Americans are so stupid. And that would hurt my feelings because I was trying my best. But when anyone is learning English as a second language and they say, uh, the chocolate. What the and fuck? then I say, the chocolate. And they're like, the chocolate. And I always think, not so easy now, is it, baguette boy? This is why you haven't been a world superpower for 300 years. <laughs> what the fuck? What I'm trying to say He's is... He's going to stole Kona, first Americans and now French. I mean, yeah, the chocolate. That doesn't work. It's the chocolate with ha, ha in the middle. The chocolate. While English nouns have no gender, the definite article the is a nightmare for most trying to learn it because one of the most difficult sounds pronounced in English is the TH sound, th. I mean, not for me, I fucking nailed it, but for non-English Not the last time, you said th, 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 you pronounced T a bit longer, it's th. People, who usually replace it with a Z, D, or an F. And if you've ever talked to someone learning English, you'll notice that one of the hardest words to pronounce is squirrel. Again, not for me, it's really just home run after home run. But if you're really looking to knock someone international Wait, down... Wait, I saw that Top Gear episode in which Jeremy Clarkson, uh, you know, asked some, somebody from the Glasgow to come and say that say some words like squirrel or something and they mess, messed up. I guess he was saying that Germans can't say squirrel. So, squirrel, that, that's how they say, that's what he was saying. <laughs> Pegs. Here's a few things that can be extremely hard to say even for English speakers. So when I put it on the screen, we can all try to say it at the same time. Anemone. Anemone. Hmm. That's not really hard. Three. Three thousands. Three thousands. Thousands. I didn't, I didn't pronounce th properly of the thousands. So. I mean, that's still a bit hard, I guess. Rural brewery. Mm, I don't know. I didn't. That didn't sound that good either. Rural brewery. Yeah, that that he nailed the brewery. Yeah, I'm not Thanks, saying guys. that. I needed that. <laughs> Additionally, in comparison to Romance languages, pronunciation in English isn't always consistent phonetically. As an example, in French you have bon, son, pon, fon, but if you try that in English, you get hat, rat, chat, wet. So it just doesn't work. <laughs> that, if you come across a word that, you haven't. That, that. <laughs> I bet you Stone Cold Steve was saying that, that. <laughs> he, does, he does say that sometimes. Seen in English before, it's sometimes impossible to know how it's pronounced. Take these for example. Though, through, thought, tough, cough, plow, and sometimes you even have hiccups. Ooh, yeah. So. It's through, not through. Thought, not thought. Yeah, yeah the, the, it changes, right? Not me though, obviously. I never chuck. Within English, there are also many dialects of the same language. For example, while American English is mostly removing redundancies in spelling and saying eggplant instead of aubergine or niche instead of niche, again, basically anything that takes more power away from the French, British English removes a lot of redundancies from entire words. As an example, in American English, you would say, I have to go down the elevator and get a ride so I can go and work out. But in British English, you just say, I have to take the lift so I can get a lift so I can go and lift. And then in Australian <laughs> English, they just completely change That's kind of simple, it. isn't it? Using word lift for everything. I mean, yeah, it is kind of true, but yeah, elevator makes, you know, more, yeah. <laughs> Get a ride so I can go and work out. Yeah. But in British English, you just say, I have to take the lift so I can get a lift so I can go and lift. And then in Australian English, they just completely change entire sentences in the most internationally destructive way possible. As an example, in Australian English, you would say, Oi. Don't you love it when a good cunt's wearing a hot pair of thongs? 
<laughs> well, most North Americans would say, oh my goodness gracious, Rachel, get the Bible. What that actually translates to in American English is, hey, don't you love it when your friend is wearing a cool pair of flip-flops? Ultimately, though, every English accent has its advantages and disadvantages. Jamaicans sound cool, but I can't understand them. South Africans sound cool, but I can't understand them. People from Scotland and Wales sound cool, but I'm pretty sure they aren't speaking English. And then people from America sound less cool the higher their neighborhood GDP. Even for me, I have positive- Higher than neighborhood GDP? Really? Huh. With the most generic Pacific Northwest accent imaginable, meaning that I am never allowed to rap. And while that means I am unable to live up to my true potential, the upside is I can do this. Hey Siri, okay Google, subscribe to Casually Explained. If that didn't work, you're lucky you're wearing headphones because next time you have them out for 20 seconds, I'm texting your mom. I am just kidding, of course. I can already do that from my phone. I love this channel. Uh, <laughs> this was such an epic video. His timing, the way he was making joy. I love how he just you know, poked at America and also poked at France too. This was great. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, but that is true, isn't it? Uh, some pronunciation really change, even though it, uh, some some of the last letters are the same. Yeah, English language is not the hardest, just because it's so mainstream. I think I don't know if just to learn it, if it is hard or not, but since it's so mainstream and it's so required in lots of places, you eventually learn it. So yeah, Mandarin is I think is the hardest one. There are languages, like I said, that I have to make some tongue noises and something like that just to sound proper. I mean, I can't do that. So yeah. All right. I guess that was the casually explain the English language. If you like my reaction, do photo, like, and subscribe. But check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description with all of my videos. Check out the cast for all the playlists. Check out the end cards. And I'll see you next time.